Jane Badger is an East Midlands wife and mother. Her life was turned upside down early one morning when 10 policemen raided her house and arrested her. I was absolutely devastated and obviously the children just totally bewildered. It, you just can't imagine what it must be like to be accused of something you haven't done when you can't do anything about it. Charged with fraud, Jane was suspended from her job working in a civilian role with the police, the very same officers that had arrested her. But some weeks into her suspension, Jane at last found somebody who believed her. And not only that, they thought they could prove her innocence. Professor Ross Anderson has been a long-standing critic of banks' so-called infallible security systems like chip and pin. He says Jane is far from the only person to have experienced a so-called phantom withdrawal. Phantom withdrawals are surprisingly common. Uh, we get a steady stream of people complaining um, that money has been taken from stolen credit and debit cards through ATMs, even when it was completely impossible for them to have compromised the pin. This happened in 2007 in the village of Houghton on the Hill, Leicestershire, where 500 customers of a petrol station had a total of £175,000 illegally debited from their accounts. The crime was traced to an employee at the garage, Abdul Rake, who used a fake card reader to clone their cards and pass the details on to Sri Lankan criminals. However, because there was a clear pattern of fraud, all the victims were refunded by their banks. No arguments. Jane wasn't so lucky. Once he'd looked at the case, Professor Anderson was convinced there were plenty of ways Jane's transactions could have been made that didn't involve her. It may very well be that the um, phantom withdrawals that appeared on her account were the result of a programming error which caused transactions to be debited more than once. Another theory was that someone had indeed made a fake copy of her card and found a cash machine that still allowed them to make withdrawals using the magnetic strip on the back of the card, thereby circumventing its chip and pin security. The UK banking industry has for years been systematically trying to deceive the public in saying that UK cards with chips in them cannot be used in ATMs in Britain in magnetic strip mode. But this is simply false. We have tested their claims again and again and again. We go out, we take a card where we've destroyed the chip and we have no difficulty using it somewhere. After Professor Anderson began raising his objections, Egg experienced a dramatic change of heart, admitting they made a mistake. All charges were dropped. For Jane, it was a final vindication. I actually went to court and I was acquitted. I was a bit hysterical, as you can imagine, I would be. Um, there was people in the court that I didn't even know and were coming up and hugging me. Despite eventually having the charges against her dropped and being reinstated in her job, Jane received no direct apology from either the police or Egg. If I'd have been found guilty, I could have gone to prison. I would have lost my job. You know, it, it would have meant my, my family, their, their lives were tipped upside down as well. Because, you know, I'm not... I am still mum, but I could be mum with a criminal record. You know, you'd never get insurance, things like that. Nobody would look at you. Everyone would walk past you and think, oh, you're just a criminal. You're no better than anybody else. They just presume I'm, I was a criminal. And that's what they, they were just going down that angle that I'd committed that fraud. Nobody else had committed that fraud because cloning, chip and pin fraud and things like that doesn't happen in their eyes, but it does. After complaining to the financial ombudsman, Egg paid her £772 back, adding a £500 payment for any inconvenience caused. Given what she went through, if this had happened in the USA, the damages would have been in seven figures. Why should the police intervene like this in a civil dispute? It's completely wrong and it's completely bizarre. All I've ever wanted was an apology and for them to admit they got it wrong. That's all I've ever wanted and I just want to know why. Why could they get it so wrong? James, you're from Which, the consumer magazine. Just how big a problem are phantom withdrawals and credit card fraud? 
Well, card fraud is a massive problem. There's hundreds of millions of pounds worth of card fraud being committed every year in the UK. But the good news is, is that consumers usually get their money back. The, the tricky cases are the ones where the right pin is used uh, and banks are increasingly saying that that must have been the consumer's fault, they must have been negligent in some way. But actually, that's not always the case. In fact, it usually isn't. One of the things that we've seen a real increase on in recent years is shoulder surfing. And that's where organised gangs actually go into crowded places, look over people's shoulders, see them typing in their pin, and then later they try and intercept the card, maybe steal it from a bag, and then take cash out of the cash point later on. Uh, in those cases, obviously, the right card's being used, the right pin is being used, and yet the customer's done nothing wrong. So if that's on the increase, what's the advice then? Well, you've got to be really careful when you're doing any debit card or credit card transactions these days. You know, actually shield your PIN number as you're typing it in. Never hand your card over to the person behind the till. There's no need to. You can put your card into the machine yourself. Um, and then, of course, you know, shred all your paperwork at home. Take all the normal precautions you do to protect yourself against fraud. And if you do that, it's very hard for a bank to claim that you've been negligent. James, if somebody spots what they believe to be a fraudulent transaction on either their bank or their credit card statement, what's your advice? Call your bank straight away and say, this wasn't me, these transactions weren't me, I need my money back. If there's any problem there and they don't refund you immediately, make a complaint. Mark the letter very clearly to the complaints department. If you then don't get the response you want, then it's time to take it to the Financial Ombudsman Service where you'll get an independent set of eyes looking over your case. And like I say, the law's on your side here and you should end up getting your money back.